All right, we're here with the new Micro Studio 4K camera from Blackmagic, and we want to see if this is going to mount well on the DJI Ronin M. Now, there's a few things in the forums, people asking about whether or not, with the weird weight distribution of it, having a lens attached, whether or not it will mount very well. So I'll tell you right off the bat that yes, this camera itself, if I mounted it on the mounting point with a heavy lens like this on the front, it would definitely be awkward. All right, this here, I have the Metabones Speed Booster and I'm going to mount it on the thread that's on the Speed Booster itself. Okay, that's gonna be much better in terms of evening out the weight distribution. So that's gonna be what I do here. I do have the Tokina 11 to 16 lens and that is a heavy lens. But here's the deal, uh, I want to mount it with a very wide lens because if I'm putting it on the Ronin M, chances are I'm going to stay wide so more things can be in focus. So I don't want to mount a 35 millimeter on this. Uh, it would be lighter, but it would also be harder to pull focus. And anybody who shot with a Ronin or Ronin M understands the difficulty involved in that. So we're going to keep the Tokina 11 to 16 on it with the Metabone Speed Booster and we're going to mount the plate onto this here. So when it comes to things you need, obviously all you need is the right screw thread to go into what you're mounting it onto. So we have the plate, we're gonna go ahead and mount it here. And what's gonna decide how far along I mount it is gonna be the area on the lens that allows me to put the lens support on it. That's gonna tell me where this plate needs to be in terms of how far up or down it is, all right? So that's also a very important detail people overlook is mounting this lens uh, support, very important. Now we're gonna take this and we're going to attempt to mount it here on the Ronin M. So let's go ahead and do so. I'm gonna change the position of this so you guys can see me attempt this. All right, so I'm happy so far with these initial adjustments. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on and see how it looks. And we'll take a look at the Ronin's motors, see how much work they're doing to maintain this position. This is always a good way to tell how well you did stabilizing. So right now, without having to do the auto-tune stability, we have our pan, tilt, and roll all within negative two to positive one. So this is looking good so far. I'm gonna go ahead and check one more time, make a few adjustments. Okay, we're gonna run the auto-tune stability, which I do anytime I mount a new camera on this. Okay, so now we're looking great when it comes to the power output on all of these different axes here, the pan, tilt, and the roll, all at zero, stabilized very well. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that this has been successfully mounted onto the Ronin. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go into part two of this video, which is, now i got to put this on it, a viewfinder. All right, I'm going to give you my solution to mounting a viewfinder onto your Ronin. Obviously, with this camera, I cannot view because it does not have its own LCD screen. I can't view what I'm seeing. The solution to that, mount the viewfinder. And this I need because I need to record as well. The studio camera does not record. Keep that in mind. So my solution to mounting this is very simple. We have $5 bicycle clamps. Now these are for bicycle handlebars and they have threads here. This is gonna be huge when it comes to mounting something on these handlebars. This is gonna save you a lot of money. That way you don't have to buy DJI's mounts that cost a lot of money. Okay, so very simple. We clamp it and we screw.
Now, the other two parts we have are pretty, pretty standard, typical uh, clamps, mounts, uh, for just accessories uh, on any, any camera at all. So what we do is we're going to put these two together, and then we're going to mount this to it. All right, so here we have our viewfinder mounted successfully onto the handlebars. And we are going to be good to go. The only other thing you're gonna to need to worry about is the HDMI or SDI cable from this to this. So here's our solution to getting the feed from here to here. We're gonna go HDMI. The reason I'm going with an HDMI cable instead of SDI from here to here is because number one, I cannot access the menu on this device without HDMI. So this will feed SDI out, but I cannot access the menu. Right. Also, the HDMI cord itself is a lot lighter in weight, slimmer, more slim, and it's gonna allow me to not have as much pull and slack on this. And that's one of the issues people have when they mount their camera and then they have something going out. So the answer has been for a lot of people to get ribbon cables. Uh, for us, we're gonna go with just one of these uh, HDMI cables and we're going to want to just wrap it around uh, or use a tie to uh, get it out of the way in terms of uh, making sure you don't have any uh, slack that's going to cause any issues. So again, this is not what you want to do unless you were in a hurry and needed to get a few shots off really quickly. You'd want to spend more time getting rid of this cord or just having a shorter one. But here's your solution with this. We have the HDMI, which is not going to cause a lot of pull. If I turn this on, I should not have very many issues. And if I do, I can easily adjust them. Let's go ahead and confirm by pulling up the app. So we seem to be good here. Now we have our solution to mounting not only a viewfinder via a very cheap handlebar mount that I would suggest buying from Amazon, but we also have the camera successfully mounted onto the Ronin M. Hope this video helps you guys. Anybody who had questions about it, uh, now we know you can mount the Blackmagic Studio Cinema Camera, and I'm going to assume uh, the other version of it that is not the Studio, that should mount as well too with similar dimensions. Just remember I did mount it onto the mounting point on the Metabones Speed Booster and not the camera itself. I'm going to assume that if you had a native MFT lens on here that was small enough, you'd have no issue with weight distribution and you would be fine. Thanks for watching, guys.